Hey everybody, it's Matt Stopa. I'm back for another video. I'm hoping you guys are doing good. It's been a while. I think I put out my last video in August of 2012. So almost a year. I'm sorry, I've been very busy. Um, I've been doing a bunch of different things, but if you have a chance, I just finished writing my book. Uh, it's The Rapid Rubyist. And it's basically a good introduction for somebody who's already programmed before, but hasn't programmed uh, in Ruby. So you're looking to learn the basics. I try to make it as simple as possible and just give you like a little bit of text and then some examples. And I think that's really a big key. So if you have a chance, check it out. It's number four right now. Um, it's pretty cheap. It's 487. So, uh, you know, more affordable than other books. But also, all the proceeds go to watsi.org, which is a Y Combinator company. And they're a charity where basically all the money goes to basically kids who need it. Um, not just kids, but adults basically in the third world. So if you have a chance, have a look. You might learn a little bit. And on top of that, how about a good cause? So let's get started. Um, I know it's been a while since I've done any videos, like I said. Uh, but I'm coming back with a new series now. Now that I've released my Ruby book, which is really an introduction to Ruby, uh, I want to really get into the the tougher elements of Ruby and Ruby but Rails as well and a whole bunch of other things and occasionally even JavaScript mostly I'm just going to show you all the tips and tricks that I've learned over my career I've been programming since 1994 and I've got to work with you know the last few years I've got to work with some of the best people in Rails and Ruby and I just want to share with you guys uh, a lot of those tips and tricks great ways to write really solid code efficient code, easy to read, and easy to maintain. Um, so that's what this is going to be all about, and I'm going to be turning this into a second book somewhere down the line, so all these code examples and everything. So without any further ado, let's get to it. So this is our example. Uh, this comes from a Rails app that I worked in, and as you can see, we have a hash here, and we're assigning all these different keys the same value. Now it's a little hard to see uh, and tell what's going on. So the first thing that you should be doing in this situation is making it so that you can format all this stuff correctly so it's readable. You can figure out what's going on. So this is, again, just something that I think will make your life a little bit easier. Um, as you can see, I'm using Sublime. I don't know if you guys have used it before or not, but if you have, you'll know that it has this fantastic feature that basically allows you to select multiple lines. So definitely try it out. Okay, so first of all, this had very poor organization. Um, and these were basically just, it was just a hash where it needed, you know, all these different keys needed to have a certain value. Now the proper, the most proper way would probably for this stuff to be coming in from either a JSON or a YAML file. But since that's not the case, I wanted to show you uh, the best, probably one of the best refactorings you could do within the code itself. So, so let's just do that. All right, so first things first, how should we handle this? Well, it's real easy. We just need to go and we're going to turn all these keys into an array. So let's do that. So let's do that first. And I think I'll just save you a little bit of the trouble having to watch all this. Okay, as you see, I just chopped out a whole bunch of the video of me doing this, but we're down to our last three, and I just want to show you that they were all the same, except for this guy right here who's a little bit different. So we'll just take these keys and append them as well. So, and this guy, all right? All right. So what are we doing and why does it matter? Well, what we're going to do is assign this to a variable. So we'll call this keys equals. So it's our array. And then we'll just iterate through the keys. So keys.each do. Well, as a matter of fact, let's just do this on one line. So we'll use this pipes. And we'll say uh, our hash and then item equals um, 
and of course I don't actually have the key I need. So this is when, or the value I should say. So I just do this frequently. Undo, copy the value needed, go back, redo it all. There you go. So now I have the value that I need assigned to all those keys. So, you know, in the example that I had, what the person was doing was really going through and doing this every single time, which was really insane. So there was like 50 values, and like 30 were one, you know, 30 different, excuse me, there was 30 different keys um, all being assigned one value, and then there was 20 being assigned another value, which you can really do this instead of, you know, you're talking about 50 lines there, you can do this in just a couple. So as you can see, we've cut our method down quite a bit. As a matter of fact, you can really just tack this on to right here and get rid of keys. That variable is not needed anymore. And so as you can see, this makes things a lot better. And as I said, this should either really be a JSON or a hash or, or excuse me, a JSON or a YAML file that you're importing. But if you are going to do it this way, and it's not ideal, at least you should do this. Now secondly, we don't need to say return. Ruby doesn't require that, so we can just say our hash. And on top of that, if you remember one of my previous videos, we deal with a tap method, so look at what we can do. We'll just save this and dot tap do our hash and we'll assign it these values. And, and that's it. I think you'll find that, hey, doing this in just a few lines sure beats 50 or more. Clean up your code, and there you go. Again, should you really have values like this in your code, I mean, in this even in an array? Probably not, but it will still work. And if you really want to be one of the Ruby cool kids, you can use percent %w instead of all this, and it will generate your array for you. If you're not familiar with percent %w, what it does is allow you to get rid of all those strings that you've been using and just do something like CDR receiver, and then you don't even need a comma. You just say app index main protocol all receiver, etc. NX1 C B R and this is 32. And then continuing on you've got just two more. C B R receiver 121. And these are pretty much all garbage values. I'm just doing this here to demonstrate exactly what was done. And C B R receiver 1311. So you can just take all this and say dot, you could really, you know, this needs to be on multiple lines. So we can actually get rid of this and it's a little bit easier to look at, I'd say, rather than have all these strings all over the place. And there you go. That's, I wouldn't say that's the tightest you could make it, but that's pretty tight and pretty good, succinct Ruby. So I hope this helped everybody. Um, again, this is this whole series is going to be just refactorings that you can do in Ruby and Rails. This is obviously something that's pulled from Rails, but it's a Ruby thing. So I hope it helps you guys out. And uh, check out my book if you have a chance. All right, guys. Take care.